Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Bill Alfonso, the manager of Champions. Bill's going to give us a quick summary of his career, and we're going to go into some details about all the interesting aspects of professional wrestling. Um, as Andrew said, I'm going to uh, summarize it pretty quick. He's going to ask me a lot of questions. And if you don't know what sports entertainment is, all you got to say is, I work with Hulk Hogan. Then you can summarize it yourself. Uh, what I do for a living. Um, pretty much that's the whole ball of wax, but I was a referee for 15 years, worked for multi companies all over the country, worked for NAS. Uh, actually, I started off when in the 80s, my first full time job, and in the 80s there were territories. So the state of Florida would be a territory, um, the Carolinas would be a territory. Mid Atlantic, uh, Texas would be a territory. The uh, Von Erics and the Funks, uh, Oregon would be a territory, um, and so on. So I started off in Florida, then it moved up the chain progressively to um, Ted Turner, the Superstation Channel 17. Um, and I worked for Jim Crockett, who ran um, WCW. And then Turner bought it, and I worked for Ted Turner. Then I went to Vince McMahon. It's called WWF at the time, and did some WrestleManias as a referee. Then I went from there to um, a company out of Pennsylvania. Um, the company was actually based out of Scarsdale, New York, but we did most of our work in Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, and I started off there um, May of '95. And I uh, was a manager, so it kind of switched roles a little bit. Hey, Andy, do I have to look into the camera when I'm talking, Daddy? <laughs> I or think you're I fine. Be myself? You're fine. Dad, Simon so. says, or you know, they're all bad damn. <laughs> you, or can I be? You've, you're you're perfect in the frame. You're fine. You be fine. Okay, thank you. Um, so you can just look at me if you want. Okay, what was that? You can just look at me if, if that's easy. Okay, you yeah, talk, that, tell the story that, to me, and the camera okay. will pick it up. Beautiful. And if I want to make a point. I'll make the point, right? Okay. okay. So let's let's move on to the uh, championship wrestling in Florida that you, you started off. Was, was that your first gig as a referee? Like, let's let's go back to who trained you no, the early. No, at the, the first gig I got. Um, actually, my father. I was about twelve, thirteen years old. My father knew Frank Klein, who was sports editor for the Tampa Tribune, mm -hmm. and Tuesday nights was wrestling in Tampa every Tuesday nights at the Armory. Eddie Graham was the owner, uh, they, they would have matches, I didn't know anything about this. So my dad had lunch with Frank Klein, who wrote the results of the matches from Tuesday night on Wednesday, mm -hmm. because uh, Florida Chicks of Wrestling, Gordon Soli put a little ad in the uh, paper Monday yeah, night, Tuesday be. night, the matches were Jack Briscoe against Dory Funk, so on and so on. So they gave two comp tickets to Frank Klein. Right. My dad had lunch with him. He said, hey, Steve, you have a couple of kids, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, I got two tickets to wrestling. Oh, my dad said, oh, thanks, Frank. So my dad came home and said, hey, Billy, I have two tickets to pro wrestling on mm -hmm. Tuesday nights. Frank Klein came to me. You remember Mr. Klein? I said, oh, yeah, he's a newspaper guy. I was 12, 13. So I didn't really know anything about wrestling mm -hmm. at all. Didn't watch it on TV, wasn't introduced to it, nothing. So I said, okay, Dad, thanks, but no thanks. I don't yeah, yeah. wrestling. What, what the hell yeah. is that? So they sat on the, the uh, fireplace panel for, uh, this was like on a Friday. <laughs> so they sat there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So now I'm getting a little curious. Wrestling, what, what is that? Yeah. So by Tuesday, I said, okay, I'll go. So me and I took one of my buddies. First night, Tuesday night, was the great Malenko versus Eddie Graham in the Russell Chain match. Uh, the blonde hair, I fell in love with it. I said, oh my God, this is what I want to do for a living. <laughs> you know? You were in love at that point? First day, I was hooked. Okay. Loved it. I never seen uh, Bobby Shane was there who got killed in an airplane crash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was Bobby Shane, um, Gary Hart, Austin Idol, Mike McCord at the mm -hmm. time, and you know the last guy? Flair? No. Uh, who? Flair was in Which? Charlotte. No, it was... Uh, he wore, he, he had a thumb gimmick, 
I have blonde hair. I'll tell you his name. He was a commentator at two. You're saying he was on the plane? Yeah, he was yeah. on the plane for the crash, right? Unfortunately, okay. Bobby Shane was pinned in the plane. Right. The other guy swam to shore. It was a miracle that they all made it. They were all mangled wow. up. And Bobby died. Mm -hmm. But Bobby Shane was there my first night, and he had a valet with him. And there wasn't too many valets <laughs> in the business at that point. Yeah. This was 1975 or something. Right, right. I'll give you the year. I got this thing mm -hmm. when I was 12 That's years right. old. Which wasn't that long ago, <laughs> and and uh, so I got hooked. I loved it. So oh my God! So I said, "Please go have lunch with Frank Klein and give me the free yeah, ticket. Yeah, let's get only three dollars to get in anyway." Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I, if you didn't see Frank, he would give me the three bucks. You okay? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If you didn't see Frank Klein, he would give me the three bucks, or I would cut the grass mm -hmm. and get my wrestling ticket. I wasn't going to miss Tuesday night. Yeah. You know, and I thought this was the greatest thing. I didn't know they traveled Monday at West Palm, Tampa, Tuesday, Wednesday, Miami, Thursday, Jacksonville, Friday, a spot show, Saturday, another spot show, Sunday, Orlando, rotated 365 days a year. I didn't know any of this. Right. But okay. these were my idols, and I wanted to be a wrestler. But I grew up to be a buck 65. <laughs> Actually, I'm 159 right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's no way I could compete, right. even though I tried to gain weight and I got a muscle builder fitness thing. and. You know, I went up to 168 pounds, that was it. Yeah. So there's no way I could compete in there. But I became friends after years of going. And by the way, I'm not the only guy that was sitting there watching wrestling. Hulk Hogan was doing the same thing I was doing. But his father didn't get him tickets to the <laughs> But he used to go on Tuesday nights. And all the cool guys would stand up against his wall. Mm -hmm. And not sit down and be, you know. Yeah. And Hulk Hogan, I didn't know him. One of the cool kids. At the time. Yeah, I was a wall. tall, skinny kid. It wasn't, you know, Hulkamania, <laughs> yeah, Daddy. Yeah. Like, he's a. It didn't hit the Hulk biceps, Hogan's yeah. the most recognized face in, in the world in wrestling. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nobody, yeah. Ric Flair, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, no, Andre but, would probably be close. <laughs> close second. Mm hmm. Uh -huh. okay. Well, let, let's, let's wrap this up. The next segment we're going to go on okay. to is asking you how. how you, what were the first things you did to break in and maybe tell us a little bit about the development of the case? I was just getting ready to jump into that.